If you click on this video, you may have the basic idea about OAuth or Open Authorization. OAuth is a simple protocol to authenticate your user through third-party providers. Google, Microsoft, Facebook, GitHub are all an example of OAuth provider. Before going any further, let's discuss about the shortcoming of traditional email password authentication method. I am not against email password authentication, but maintaining a robust and updated authentication system by yourself is very hard. Hackers always find a new way to break into your system. If you are a solo developer, you should better put your efforts in building products rather than fight the hackers. These are the topics we are going to cover in this video. I have put the timestamp in the description, but I recommend you to watch the video without skipping. First, we understand the OAuth flow, how the OAuth actually works behind the scene, and how simple it is to understand. Then you install the required packages and obtain credentials from the OAuth provider. After that, we make an Golang application implementing OAuth. Then we store user auth state in a session cookie. Then we make a demo and finally recap what we have learned in this video. Imagine the scenario. A user visit your website and want to create an account. When the user click on the login button, a get request is sent to your server. Your server register itself as an OAuth client with some OAuth provider. The OAuth provider gives client ID and client secret to the server. The server use these credentials to create a unique OAuth URL and redirect the user to the OAuth provider website. When user complete its authentication, the OAuth provider redirect the user to your server with some query parameter in the URL. These query parameters contain a code and a state variable. You can use the state parameter to restore the user state. Then the server uses this code to get the access token and refresh token from the OAuth provider. When this request is successful, the OAuth flow ends and the user is successfully authenticated. Golang standard library provides OAuth2 implementation package. First install this package. The OAuth2 library also includes provider specific package. You can pick any provider, but here I am using Google. Google OAuth is widely used in website and very popular. To use Google OAuth in your Golang application, first you need to obtain the client ID and client secret from Google. Go to this URL and click on the credentials option. Now click on the create credential button and create an OAuth client ID. Finally, put your authorized redirect URLs and generate the client ID and secret for your application. When, you're, when your user complete the authentication in OAuth provider website, he or she is redirected to this URL. For now, I am setting this to my local host port 8000. This credential should be kept in secret and never commit to GitHub. Use them as environment variables to, to access from your Golang application. After installing the OAuth package, now we make three routes to handle the OAuth flow. First create a login route to serve the login page. Then create an OAuth route to handle the OAuth request and finally make a callback route to handle the OAuth redirect from the provider. Inside the login handler, serve an HTML login page. This page contains a login button which points to the OAuth route. Inside your main function, create an OAuth2 configuration. Get the client ID and client secret from the environment variables. Set the redirect URL to the callback route. In the scope field, add what API you want to call on behalf of the user. Here I want to access the user public profile and email. Therefore, I request email and profile scope. Set the endpoint to Google endpoint. Inside the OAuth route, use the configuration instance to generate a unique OAuth URL. Next, redirect the user to the OAuth provider website. Here we are setting the access type to offline, and offline access gives a refresh token in addition to access token. You can use the refresh token to regenerate the access token without re-authenticating the user. 
In online access type, when the access token expires, the user has to re-authenticate to get that access token. Now let's implement the callback route. The redirected URL from the OAuth provider contains a query parameter called code in the URL. Access this code from the request URL, then use the exchange method in OAuth configuration to exchange the code for a token. This token struct contains access token and refresh token. Save this token to a persistent storage. Create an HTTP client using the token we got from the previous step. This client method automatically refreshes the token if the current access token is expired. Make a GET request to this endpoint to get the public information of the user. The response from the API is a JSON body with these fields. The JSON decoder method decodes the JSON body and prints the output. At this stage, the user is authenticated and you got his public information like email address and name etc. Now redirect the user to the user dashboard in your application. The OAuth flow ends here. To save the user authentication state, you can use a session cookie with some user specific values. Maintaining a user session helps to avoid frequent re-authentication of your user and improve the user experience. For this task, you can use the SCS package. Install the package and initiate the session manager inside the main function. Add the load and save middleware to read and set cookie in its request. Now create a user struct. In the callback route, instantiate a user with the user values from the OAuth provider. Then set the cookie for the user. The session manager uses gob encoding to store these values. Therefore, register the user struct with the gob package. To read the user value from a cookie, use the get method in a session manager. Let's run our application to check if everything is working perfectly. In this tutorial, you get the overview of how the OAuth flow works. Then we have implemented the concept into Golang code. And finally, we test our application. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to get notification about my upcoming videos.